Welcome to another video from SQL Maestros and today I'm going to talk about TemDB space usage. TemDB is a system database inside SQL Server and it is used by SQL Server for internal and temporary operations. It's a great database, a lot of good things can be done with this, but uh, there are a lot of bad things that can happen with TemDB. And the most common question that I see in forum and, you know, typically DBAs do a lot of troubleshooting with the size of TemDB, the growth and the space consumed by TemDB database. As I mentioned before that it is used internally by SQL Server to store a lot of temporary data. If we have a good understanding of what is being stored and why it is being stored in TemDB, it really helps in troubleshooting TemDB performance. In my demo, I am going to show you uh, an output, something which is similar to uh, this uh, screenshot. And you can see that I am currently looking at TemDB uh, data size. So let me just take the pen highlighter here and you can see that a TemDB here has a data file and a log file and right now the size is pretty low which is just like you know the default 8 MB out there and the available space is in um, is, is just 4 MB and 6 MB. Now in the demo I'm going to um, run a lot of different types of workloads and you will see that this 8 MB which is which looks like so less and so low will run into GBs and and you will see that we will hardly have any space available and typically in production environment what happens is temdb um, data file and log file they would generally go on dedicated luns uh, what i mean by lun is the logical drive and uh, um, and if there is not enough space of course uh, uh, you're running out of space and sql server will then uh, not be able to function properly and the last thing that you want is your production sql server uh, uh, should run uninterrupted now, uh, when you are uh, troubleshooting TemDB, you can see that <coughs> TemDB uh, objects are kind of classified as user objects, uh, internal objects and version store. Now, this understanding is important. User objects are uh, objects that are created by our stored procedures, queries and workloads. Uh, these could be like local and global temporary tables. Internal objects are created by SQL Server um, for its internal purposes. For example, if your query has a sort or a hash operation and it needs quite a bit of space to complete its job, it can create internal work tables and this size represents that. Version store, uh, the most common thing, uh, the, uh, the most common feature that comes to my mind is the snapshot isolation level uh, that uh, where, you know, multiple versions of records are being maintained. So though uh, that version store is also stored in TemDB. So I am going to show you a demo on, you know, to track TemDB space usage using two sets of DMVs and how you could monitor it. And then I will run a set of workloads and I will show you how each of these uh, different types of uh, objects consume space, which can overall increase the size of TemDB database. Action time. Let's jump to demo. Let's get started with the demo. I am going to use DMV, uh, DMDB file space usage and a system catalog database underscore files to get this output that I showed you in the PowerPoint presentation. So if you look at this output, uh, we have the uh, TemDB data file and the log file. And currently you can see that both of them are sitting pretty low at less than 100 MB each. Uh, but you have quite a bit of space available again, which means the irrespective of what the file size is about more, more than 90% of the space is available. And that is because if you look at the, uh, the output on the top here, user objects, internal objects and version store are hardly using any space at all. So these are the, um, sorry, these are the two DMVs that I'm, uh, this is the DMV that I'm using DMDB file space usage. And of course, when it comes to anyone, uh, if you have ever troubleshooted TemDB, you would know that this DMV is very critical. And uh, the, uh, this DMV has some of these columns like internal object reserve page count, uh, then version store, then unallocated extent, etc. And of course, the user object uh, reserved page count. And then we do a bit of mathematics to get the uh, kind of output. Now, what I am going to do is run a few workloads and I will keep coming back to this uh, query and I will keep monitoring and I will see that the TemDB data uh, 
uh, file size will keep growing and available space will also keep con uh, constantly will keep coming down and then we will see uh, where is the space being consumed is it being consumed by user user objects the internal objects or the version store so for the purpose of uh, running these uh, simulated workloads let me go ahead and create a stored procedure called sp populate data and that is just for the purpose of demo you should not try doing all these uh, things in your production environment you should try to play around with this uh, in your test or dev environment now once the stored procedure is created uh, i'm going to another uh, query window and a lot of code here so let's go and start with the first one so in the first one i am trying to show you the um, space uh, usage for uh, our user objects and let's say in our database irrespective of which database you create this uh, you are creating a global temporary table so i go ahead and create this global temporary table and you know that the global temporary table is going to be created in temdb now if i just switch back for a moment uh, to this one you can see that user object is at 1536 kilobytes and this is not increasing right now the moment i start adding some data to this so use temdb and i'm going to use the stored procedure to insert the, some data in this global temporary table and while this is running and let me go and run the monitoring script and now if you keep an eye on the user objects you will see it's increasing from 4 to 7 mb to 8 mb to 9 so on and so forth so i think the query is done and now you can see the space has increased to 9 mb now uh, there's one thing that you will notice that uh, user objects has gone all the way to 9 MB but um, and the data file size is still at 72 MB because you had enough space available in the data file to be consumed so the data file size need not be increased if um, let's say just to make it a little bad or worse I will just add another zero there and I'm just trying to increase uh, insert more and more data and now when I run this and I go back and let's go and keep looking at this and now keep an eye that user objects is of course increasing but at the same time the available space in mb that is decreasing so now you will see the available space is less than 50 mb and at the same time user objects is uh, <coughs> has grown over 20 mb so this is really what happens is um, as you consume more and more um, temdb uh, you store more and more data in TempDB, you will see uh, the space going less. But also observe that the total size, the data file size has still not <clears throat> increased because uh, we still have available space available uh, there uh, to be consumed. So let me go and stop this for the time being now. <clears throat> At some point, what will happen is the available space will uh, hit uh, the zero mark and then the data file needs to be uh, grown and then the auto grow will kick in and the data file will grow further now <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, this was a quick demo on how you can see the user objects uh, uh, section there uh, ha is growing inside uh, temdb the the space that is uh, reserved for uh, temporary objects that your workloads are creating and we manually created a temporary table and we were inserting data into it now let's go back uh, into the code and now let's see some internal objects so i have a, a simple query there and i'm just going to do some cross join and run this in a while loop and while this is running i will see that internal objects which is right now uh, sitting at 448 kilobytes will uh, of course start growing and i think now what's going to happen is that um, you act actually for that sort operation you can see there is going to be a multi-level sort here uh, for this sort operation this uh, space of 448 uh, of course uh, i mean uh, a work table is going to be created and uh, and this available space here 22 megabytes is not going to be enough so to hold that temporary uh, sorted data the intermediate results of the sort operations you will need a work table and uh, the data file size is going to grow now so let's go and uh, execute this query now and while it's running i will go back here and let's go and see internal objects has gone to 960 kilobytes and let's see and wait for some more time and there you go now it is 49 mb and you can see temdb has gone to 136 mb so the temdb um, has kicked in and again um, as we keep running that in a loop 
uh, you can see uh, because we are running it in a loop so that the internal work table is being consumed so not not much there but you can see there was some increase let's go back and uh, let me stop this workload and let's make it a little worse uh, for example um, why not pressurize temdb a little more and we can say c dot um, number there and we'll say descending now this is going to go even worse and you and the temporary uh, result set of that intermediate result set of the sort operation is going to be quite big and now you will see that hopefully this will go even beyond um, a GB maybe so let's wait yes so we are going now you can see TempDB has is going to touch 500 MB so just keep an eye on the total size now it's going to go even beyond a GB and what's interesting to note is the available space at some point I, I was able to see that see look at the available space is just 1 MB because it's constantly growing TempDB is constantly going growing and uh, all this is being used by this intermediate result set of the sort operation so this is the query engine requiring that much space space to complete the execution of the query so this is quite a big there and uh, you can see the TempDB data file has grown. Um, it's touching 3 GB now. So yeah, it's more than 3 GB now and uh, available space is of course uh, pretty less. Now the most interesting thing is while that workload is constantly uh, running and you can see it's, touch, it's gone over 4 GB. Now let me go and just stop this query. Now you will <clears throat> observe an interesting uh, aspect. Uh, so let's pause here for a moment and you can see that the TempDB data file size is close to 4 GB available space is of course just 3 MB because the space was being used as it was available and you can see internal object here is also consuming close to 4 GB but now that workload has stopped which means when the workload is stopped when that query is stopped do we really need that work table again no we don't need it anymore right so because the query has stopped or it has completed it, its execution or even if if it, if it was cancelled that work table is of no use anymore because that that uh, session is gone uh, so let's go and uh, execute this and you will see that internal objects is back to a very low value total size of TempDB is close to uh, 4.6 GB and look at this the available space is 4.5 GB which means now the data file um, size the size of the data file of TempDB will uh, will not come down automatically either you got to shrink this manually if you want to recover space on the disk you will have to re, uh, shrink this manually or if you restart SQL Server, which may not be a good idea in the production environment, uh, TempDB will um, reset itself uh, to the default values. Because as you know, TempDB is a throwaway database. Uh, anything inside TempDB is discarded and the space is recovered and it resets back to the default size of whatever you have set it. But otherwise, this 4.6 GB is not going to come down automatically. But you can see now that if I if let's say if I go back and run the same workload again, will it grow beyond 4.6 GB? No, it will not until and unless um, this available space is not being used. Uh, the data file size will not grow. So there we are. Um, I just gave you a quick demonstration of how internal objects can, you know, exponentially grow the size of TempDB data file. And in most environments, this is what I see. It's not really much the user objects. Uh, typically, I have seen if you're using snapshot isolation, uh, the version store is being used heavily. And I'm just going to give you a demo of that. And in many cases, most cases, I see that internal objects, all these expensive queries with expensive sorts and hashes uh, they uh, consume a lot of space in TempDB and these queries are like they come they run for some time and they go away uh, and their job is done but the TempDB sits at this increased uh, file size and you got to do something about this manually it will not come down automatically let me uh, quickly show you the version store now uh, friends so let me go back to the last piece of the demo uh, for me to show you the uh, new isolation level snapshot uh, so that it can consume version store, I'll just enable read committed snapshot on AdventureWorks 2012. I have enabled uh, read committed snapshot 
and let's go back to the query there and see that version store is zero which means of course it's blank it's empty nothing is stored in version store as of now and uh, let me open you know i can run this in the new query itself so i'm going to uh, create a table and insert um some value even that's not required i'll skip that because i all i need to do is read committed snapshot is um enabled which means now if i try to um okay let me create this table i will have to create this table because i'm using that in the query so let's go ahead and create that table so now um read committed snapshot here means that uh, the default isolation level of uh, sql server is uh, read committed and when we say read committed snapshot is enabled, uh, we have actually uh, enabled uh, a snapshot uh, behavior in some ways, which means if I create a transaction and I'm updating inside a transaction, the last committed record, the last committed values are going to be stored in the version store. So just for the sake of demo, you can see version store is, is sitting at zero here. And if you look at version store, I mean, if you want to see all the records in the version store, you can use this DMV, DM Tran version store. And if I execute this, you can see that it's blank, it's empty, uh, no record exists there. Now let's go and begin a Tran, and this is going to be an in-flight transaction. I'm not committing, uh, I'm not rolling back. So let's just do a small update there, one row affected. Now, if I go and look into the version store, you will see that there is one record and this one record is the the last image, the last committed image of that record, which is like in this value stored here. And uh, if I go back to the TempDB query and if let's go and execute here, you will see now 64K is being consumed. So that one image uh, of the record is consuming 64K. Now that's how the version store is being uh, used. And now you can imagine if you run a mass update, which is something like, you know, um, uh, you know, updating like say millions of records, you can, you can imagine, uh, and you can do the mathematics yourself, how much space would you really need in the version store if you have to uh, store the last committed value of every record in that batch update. Now let's go and roll back. Uh, when I roll back, of course, um, now, uh, this particular session does not need a reference uh, to that image, that version that was there in the version store and um, garbage collector will run automatically and in some time, maybe in a minute's time, you will see that this record from the version store uh, should go away. So let's just wait for us for a few more seconds and I'll continue to execute and till the time this record is here. Uh, of course, version store. Okay, there you go. Version store is back to zero, which means this record is gone. Okay, and the version store is now clear because we rolled back or committed our transaction and the reference to the old version was not required anymore. So in this demo, I did show you how you can monitor and kind of uh, in your troubleshooting endeavors with TempDB space usage, get an understanding of where exactly is TempDB eating up so much space? Is it the user objects? Are there a lot of work tables being created by your queries and workloads, which are like they come, they conquer and they go away and, and, and you know, the space lies uh, unutilized or is it the version store? Also keep an eye on the fact that uh, your TempDB data file size is quite big, but then at the same time, a lot of space is also available in the TempDB uh, data file. Well, then thank you very much for your time for uh, watching this video. I hope to meet you again soon in another video.